Hey everybody, it's Captain Sweep up here in the old uh, USS Penetrator. And, you know, most of the people that know me don't know that I have a twin on a starship that's my actual higher self, but we're kind of in this weird duality relationship that you can't kind of understand until you take into account the relationship between 3D and 5D. And sometimes you lose track of time, you lose track of yourself, you lose track of consciousness, you lose track of why you're here. You know, why, why, why are you here? I mean, I'm in a starship. I'm trying to save humanity to transform the world's economic system from a fear base to a love base. And that's kind of like my overarching thing. And, you know, that doesn't play out so well a lot being alone in a starship trying to create this communication system with uh, my other uh, counterpart who's not the greatest, you know, stick in the, the dynamite bag. Um, and then there's you guys, like, look at the audience. I'm lucky if I get two people, five people, six people. The very secret plan is very secret. And it's not from uh, a lack of interest. You see, I, I think if you knew the plan, if you, if you really paid attention, if you knew what was going on, you'd be like, I'm so excited to be in the plan. Uh, but even the top players and the major uh, people don't seem to realize they're in a plan and that I'm sending them all these messages all the time and it's meaningless to them. And uh, we're not teaming up in the, in the way that I would have thought, thinking that humanity as a species for the first time has a worldwide communication system. And we have a methodology to bring people together uh, across the planet in, in, a, in a Zoom video conferencing, laptop, internet, minimum resources, but basically free. And so, you know, what are we doing with it? You know, scrolling, firing memes to each other, like sending an email. Uh, like what do most people do with the, the, the laptop? Like you came to a laptop, you brought a laptop, let's say in 1970 and said, okay, this is what you can do with it. <laughs> you know, but you're the only person who, who had it on the planet. You'd be like a king, you'd be the, 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 the top person in technology on the planet. And now everyone has the possibility of one. And, and yet, you know, there's hundreds of millions, I don't know, billions of people with laptops that can run a world if it's set up right. So people are really distracted by entertainment. They're distracted by movies. They're distracted by the porn. They're distracted by all of these things that get human sort of a titillation going or stimulate the human senses for pleasure. But in the background, there's all this stuff happening that the masses of people never understand or realize. And it's like a game where on the first level you play at a certain level and it's fine, it's handy, but it's, it's, it's nothing compared to the game at the higher levels. That if you really understand the game and the nuances, you raise your levels up, you raise your ranks up, you uh, improve your school, I mean, your, your skills. Uh, freaking computer glitches. But the main thing being that there's a big difference between people who have no idea there's a game going on versus people who are very aware that there's a game going on. The game landscape can switch like that and all of a sudden you're, you're in a different space. You're with different people and it's not quite the same language atmosphere. You're not gonna talk the same way. And so you gotta be able to read the scene but for the most part, let's say in Canada, at the, at the game that people are playing, you know, you kind of have to read the difference between that's a restaurant and that's a, a, a gas machine place. And there's a big difference between the two and you just notice it. And so you go into each one and it's different. 
But then you might go, well, what's a gas machine place? gas station it's different from a restaurant language is different all of a sudden you get confused different words don't mean the same things but the point was how do we play as a team how are we using this technology together how are we talking to one another what are we talking about and how are we doing this in reference to what we call business and how does that translate into us attracting money as a group as a team as a larger community and spreading it out rather than everyone trying on their own to do everything by themselves this doesn't make sense so you need a metaphor for the team to come together that's different than your normal business teams have as team members we want to look at each other as unique as superheroes, as gifted people, but we have to figure out what these gifts are, and then we've got to figure out how these gifts interact with other people. That is a very big thing. You know, how do we organize our minds? Here we have individual actions, team actions, and community actions. Have you ever just looked at all the actions in your life and looked at them in those three levels? And how do you look at the cycles of events where these actions take place, as well as conversations? How do you organize that in your mind? How do you organize your information on your computer and off your computer? How do you organize your business model to match how you organize your mind, to organize how you organize your information? Do you ever think about that? What we're essentially talking about is the reorganization organization of your mind so you can distinguish between the new and the old paradigm because the world cannot continue as it is and if you wish to stay in the old paradigm of fear well that's your choice but there's a whole bunch of other people who would like to build a whole new economic system one that's based upon love and one that's based upon intelligence and a wise use of resources all of this is a game where you play a character and you have a team, you participate in a story, and you build your vault. And it is here that we come together to do something in a very big way. One of the main new concepts is called a shared knowledge community. And what you have here is 12 teams of 12 people, 12 types of jobs that wouldn't ordinarily be put together or configured in a manner that you as you see here happens around a circle where there's 12 originators, 12 entrepreneurs, 12 coaches, 12 tech gurus, 12 artists, 12 healers, 12 planetary guardians, 12 illuminators, 12 mediators, 12 facilitators. And then the two missing on here are the 12 youth and the 12 elders. And so it brings together 144 people into an economic system that is a cell for the new paradigm in competition to the corporations, which are a cell in the old paradigm. So it's like start to reorganize everything, first in your mind and then together as people and in software connectedness. I know it's a big leap. I just said a lot. I got to keep saying it in different ways and sometimes having a script, but most of the time attempting to share a flow of information that gives a lot of ideas in a short amount of time that connects them together in such a way where you go, oh, I see that's in the plan, that's in the plan, that's in the plan. And you either believe and agree to it or you don't. And if you don't have a plan, show me your plan. Show me anything. But if you don't got something better than this, why not pay attention a bit, learn something new, and jump out of the rabbit hole that you're in connected to this government indoctrination system, which isn't there for your greater good. It is there to treat you as a slave. And it does so in many ways. 
and it does many things to have you not think that. But there's an institutional oppression occurring now that is beyond almost believability. And if we don't do something to get out of it, we're gonna be trapped and the next generations are gonna get, get trapped because we didn't do something right now. And so now is not the time to sit back and stay an armchair quarterback. Now's the time to be the Jedi Knight. Now's the time to rise to your highest potential, even as the world is crumbling apart. All of us have the ability to access a higher mind, to access a higher spirit, to access a universal intelligence that runs through us all when we tune our minds and our hearts especially our hearts, into our connection with Mother Earth, into our connection with each other, to our connection with our loved ones, in connection with love, to this whole event we're in. And we need to take back control of our minds, take back control of our beliefs, take back control of everything about our lives and get them out of the hands of oppressors that are actually aiming at negative consequences for us and everyone else on this planet. There are people out there who for most of their life have been working on a certain idea or working on a certain invention or building something, bring something to the species, bring something to the community, bring something that the community hasn't been ready to accept because it's been organized in a certain manner to almost kill community and heart felt friendship and connection and is replaced by this uh, transactional analysis mindset of equating everything to money and then getting whole nations on uh, in debt to interest on interest to the people who bring usury into a country and then want to hide the fact that they've been kicked out of all these other countries for doing the same thing and now it's happening again and they don't want to be named you know, I know that brings in a whole other bowl of fish because that's how the division starts. How as soon as you have this against them, the divine divide and conquer starts. And so this this is not a us versus them in all the other ways that are created. There's just a few of them. I call them the freaking nutballs. And then there's the rest of our species. And we need to identify who our enemy is and we have to identify how they are doing what they are doing because they use deception as their most important methodology. And so you have to take that into account. You have to understand, you know, who do I trust? Who do I trust for the source of my knowledge? And what is their intention towards me? And what is their intention towards the species? Are they in a bloodline where they feel they have the right to manipulate the rest of the species towards wars that ruin countries that ruin lives while they benefit over and over again cats out of the bag too many people understand really what has occurred and if you're watching this video this is the beginning to attempt to explain something which is not so easy to understand if you're caught within you know the world we grew up in and to leave that, <clears throat> you have to go down a different path. And I think I've done enough research in my life that I can, something has come through, through teachers and through books and through my experience. I believe I have something to share that if you get it and you understand it, you'll see how we have to leave the system as it is. We cannot go forward utilizing insanity. And so we have to present something that's better. We have to create something for ourselves that we control that is better for us. And we just start using it. And then the whole world starts using it. And it's done without a war. It's done by common sense. And it's done because all the people said, okay, we're in. And it spread. And it distinguished all those people who want to keep going with war from everyone else. 
and our numbers were billions and their numbers were hundreds of thousands. There's so few people on the planet who want to keep war going on. And the ones that, you know, there's a very intelligent group of people on the planet right now with a laptop sitting here, maybe listening to this, but is paying attention and we need to organize. You know, we need to organize. And now is the time because guess what? They're, they're shutting everything down. So these guys are creating an opportunity for us to start to organize together. And there's a window. And the window is at a time when we're in a very sort of precarious position. And the people here who run the banks, and this is the main reference point for the control mechanisms, the Bank of International Settlements and the IMF and the World Bank and then all the central banks. And this is the system which is like the, it siphons, it siphons the wealth and the energy of the people. And if you feel like you can never get ahead, that's because you can't. You're like in an engine and you don't know it. The world needs healing. One of the most important things in order to heal is to leave the condition that is creating what you need to heal from. This is a kind of a conversation, a healing conversation. And a healing conversation happens so that people can express their pain. Think of all the pain being created on the planet right now. Think of all the pain being created again, by a small group of people that then manipulate the media, manipulate the people into believing something to be true that isn't true. And if you look at this COVID crisis, it's all over there. Whatever they said was gonna happen didn't. And then you look and you look at how they lied and they're still lying and they're bringing in further lockdowns. This is not good people. And what's not good is complacency in the face of it. The least you can do is start to organize, talk, speak. You know, this is not a time to sit at home and do nothing. This is a time for designing and planning and communicating and getting to know one another in a much different manner than you know. There's so many people out there that have brilliant minds and understand subjects, but they can't teach it in the way they would teach it because they're within an educational structure that doesn't allow them to be who they are. And that same institutional structure does not allow the children or the students to be who they are. You know, we need a complete restructuring and transformation of the educational systems. And that's what's happening now. I mean, no matter what, they're closing all the schools down. And now you gotta learn through the internet. There's gotta be a positive side to that. And that's what this is. It's like the beginning of going, ah, okay, well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we'll do our thing over here. So we need to learn. We need to teach each other. We need to know when someone is in an instructional conversation and wanting to convey something to us, even in a normal type of situation. We can always be teaching one another. We can always be open to learn from somebody, but not if structures set it up to be such a, a limited experience and painful for the most part for most of us. We're entering a whole new world. And for many of us, we can make our living out of a laptop anywhere on the planet. And why do we start to build these communities in all these places where uh, knowledge workers, knowledge seekers start to bring together what they have to sit by the fire, to share food and to create a lifestyle where you're happy. You know, how do you do that when you've got like the sheriff of not trying to take all your stuff and the taxes are, are too high and the wages are too low and the taxes are going up and the wages stay the same and the cost of everything is going up all the time. It just don't work and it don't work because it's connected to this insane money system where real the connection between value 
and you know life is, is not there anymore so we're, we're the, the degree of our illusion is so strong that you know it's mass psychosis it's an insanity and when you step out of it and when you understand why it is that way and then you can have a sort of a larger more holistic analysis and interpretation of life it's because we 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 need an operating system that, that does something that isn't being done now and that's connect us in our thinking connect us in our mind connect us in a conceptual reference point so we can work together as teams to create again the lifestyle that we want and everyone knows very gifted people but you can also see that they're probably floundering in many ways because they don't have the infrastructure they don't have the support mechanisms to deal with what the gift is and so that's what has to be a, a very big part of how we come together we're all very unique and all of us need sort of different things there's some things we we all share and that that's something we need to build together because it will benefit all of us right and one of the main components is infotech online right now software and what i've done is designed a language structure that can organize any business organize any community organize any job and connect all the software together but it's a theory abstract it needs people to learn it and it needs people to put it into practice and I ask you, if you have a plan, let's integrate it, let's connect it, let's make it real. Doesn't that interest anybody?